Okay, I'm back, and I'm gonna talk about the bootstrap because I have a lot of systems and a lot of drives, and I often have to reinstall the same setup with i3wm, network manager, ranger, and then copy a bunch of config files every time I do an installation, which is kind of lame. So I made a installation script. I'm sure it's not the most flushed out installation script in the world, but I think I'm gonna call it Tripcode's Auto Rising Debian script, or TARDS for short. Um, but anyways though, what I wanted to talk about is the steps required to do a debootstrap installation. These debootstrap, I think it's what the normal installer uses, but if you use the command line tool, you can actually pretty much set it up on anything. So uh, let's take a look. Okay, so we're going to take a look at my little debootstrap installation script. It's going to start with install.sh and as you can see, I didn't put any parameters because it takes in pretty much a device directory. So if we go to fdisk and look at the devices installed, we can see we have a second little USB stick device plugged in the side. So next thing it takes in is a username and password. And then finally, the size of the root partition. So, debootstrap pretty much just takes uh, Debian installation and makes it happen in a folder, but that isn't entirely useful unless you have a device mounted to that folder. So, we need to format the, that drive and then mount the right directories. So, here I'm just echoing in a bunch of commands into fdisk. So, if you type in fdisk on your computer and just specify a device, let's say slash dev slash sdb, since this is a USB stick we're going to format. The script will actually take care of this, but just to show you how it works, we'll type in uh, o, which is going to create a new empty DOS partition table, add a new partition for root, but uh, you, you pretty much just type in n and p create a primary partition and just go with the default so enter twice and then for the last sector uh, since it's like a 57.3 gigabyte drive let's make it uh, plus 54 or let's make it 50 gigabytes and that's gonna be our root and we want to remove the signature so it's gonna be already uh, it's already formatted and then Pretty much we're going to do that again for the swap partition, but since the swap partition is going to take up the rest of the device, we can just press enter a bunch and then write it with W, but we don't actually have to write it since uh, we're just going to use the script. So, so after FDIS creates the partitions, the next thing you're going to have to do is format them to uh, some sort of file system. So we're going to format our root directory to uh, ext4 and swap to swap. Then we're going to mount the root directory on the mount folder and then run dbootstrap in it. So dbootstrap, you can specify an architecture like uh, you know, AMD 64, i386, pretty much like for 32-bit and 64-bit x86 systems, but Debian has, supports a lot of architectures, such as like PowerPC and MIPS and things like that. So I also have the uh, version of uh, Debian specified. I think the bootstrap also works for Ubuntu. But uh, right now we're just going to be installing Debian Stretch. The next thing after that is we're going to copy some files. First thing we're going to do is copy the fstab file. And F, the fstab file is pretty much just going to tell Linux what the, I guess, uh, partition scheme is and what things it needs to mount in what location. So if you take a look at our fstab, it's pretty simple. 
we just have uh, slash dev slash uh, SDA1 or the first partition mounted as uh, root and the next one mounted as swap. So another thing is uh, it might be a better idea if you're going to be installing this on like a USB flash drive or something to use a uh, device UUID I believe because that will allow you to uh, not have issues where the system will think it's SDB or something and then won't be able to mount your swap partition or something like that. So if you need to do that, just use BLK ID, but I'm actually gonna use this uh, installation I made as my main install. So if you actually look at the uh, FSTAB file on here, it should be probably the same, unless something weird happened. The next thing that the install script is going to do is pretty much just copy in the sources list for apt and I'm doing a few interesting things with that, not really too interesting but a little bit more uh, like I have a default release specified which uh, goes into like the apt.d folder and that's going to tell it the default release is stretch but I also have the uh, actual sources list having testing sources. This will allow me to get testing packages by typing in a slash t and then testing before the package name, which means I can get a up-to-date version of Ranger, which will have image preview using uh, urxvt. So, go here and yeah so I, I do kind of enjoy my full screen image preview so I also uh, need a newer version of GCC and that's su supplied with a uh, stretch so okay now back to the install script so after all those files are copied it's just gonna mount directory so and then it's going to ch root into the mounted directories, which will allow you pretty much to install the stuff you want to install. So uh, if you're going to do this manually, when you ch root into something, it pretty much just gives you like this terminal where you root inside of the uh, installation. You can actually like ch root into, you know, like if I had like Linux on this hard drive or something and I wanted to mess around with it without actually having a system that's installed in. I could do that with chroot. chroot is actually a really useful tool. So it's going to call chroot with the chroot script. So let's take a look at chroot. So first thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to I don't know, if you don't put that export term equals X term 256 color thing, some applications have problems, but most of the time it doesn't really matter. We're gonna first, we're gonna actually add the new user. So this is gonna take in the uh, username and password from the original script, and it's pretty much gonna feed it in to uh, add user with echo again. And then, since this is kind of just a personal script, I'm just gonna have it like just set the time to Chicago. And after that, we're gonna set a host file and then do the same echo thing to set the root password. And then we're gonna install all the fun packages. But first we need to update and upgrade the packet or sources list. Actually, I don't think you need to upgrade, but whatever. Um, so what are we installing? We're installing sudo firmware slash IWL Wi-Fi, which is like a Intel Wi-Fi firmware driver thing. Uh, a Linux image, you need a Linux image and you need it to match the architecture you're installing. If you install the 686 Linux image, you're gonna have a bad time uh, with your debootstrap script or installation. Uh, okay, so um, next, uh, Vim, the uh, GTK version works with X better, so I just 
install that because otherwise copy and paste has some issues with it on Debian and uh, Chromium, um, yeah, FFmpeg, Network Manager, you know, kind of just a bunch of applications that I use. Okay, so this line should install Grub2, which is just your bootloader. So you're going to have to uh, select the same device that you're installing Debian onto. But uh, it will actually pause the installation with the end curses window, which is kind of annoying to script for. But after that, though, the installation proceeds to get i3 gaps installed. And how it does that is it echoes a bunch of uh, well, enters and yeses into um, this i3 gap script on GitHub. Uh, I know it's a lazy way to install it, but it works and it seems to... I've been using it since Jesse, so... Okay, so after the chroot.sh script finishes, the program isn't quite over because install.sh is still running and has more work to do. And mainly its work is copying config files into directories and copying all the f files in the files directory on your ho the host computer into the home directory. So you can have some files like uh, here. I, for example, I copied my C++ folder over. So I'm going to copy the uh, font size plugin for URXVT so I can zoom in and out. The config for i3, the uh, X resources file, the um, I guess i3 status, but I really should update that because the system does not have four CPUs. The uh, i th oh oh yeah, then the RC config for Ranger. And then finally, because this is all done as root, it's going to have permissions problems unless you s you change the uh, permissions or ownership to the uh, new user. So I'm going to run chroot one more time, but with uh, shown to uh, pretty much just, I guess, shown all the uh, files to the entered in user. So I guess that is... Um, pretty much the script for uh, install.sh, but we're not quite done yet because one of the files we copied in over was the bash profile. And if we look at the bash profile, we can take care of some things that would be a little bit difficult to take care of in ch root, such as um, first time you log in, you'll be greeted with Input password to set up Zorg, and then you can it'll run xconfigure on your system and create a Zorg.conf. I mean, you don't really have to have one of these, but it sometimes fixes uh, the transparency with like URXVT, so it's just kind of nice to have. And you don't really want to run that every time. Another thing it does is it uh, creates the config for Ranger and then copies in the RC conf from uh, the home directory into its proper location. So, yeah, um, after that though, it'll remove the files and it will echo start X into your bash profile. So pretty much this file will just disappear after the first time you run it and just be start X. So here I'll show a little sample, I guess. Yeah, so I guess that sums up everything and um, that is how you make a little installation script with dbootstrap and Debian and how you can install, uh, I guess, Debian on your little SanDisk drive. And I guess, um, we should at least run it, right? Okay, so sudo dot dash install sh and uh, slash dev slash stb. The username, which in this case is gonna be trip code. My, my favorite password, one, two, three, four, five. And I'm missing something. I remember there being four 
Offer rooms. Hmm. Well, it should tell me. Oh. Man, sorry, I forgot. I also used... Oh, size of the partition. Okay, uh, 50 plus 50 gigabytes. Okay. And... Yeah, it should, uh, should run, and... I guess, uh... Let's clip to it booting up after it finishes. Okay, so I tested it on two different systems. One, uh, a Libreboot X200 and a uh, stock BIOS X200S. On the X200, those Librebooted, it booted up quite quickly. Uh, this was the second system I ran it on, so you don't get to uh, see that uh, neat little, I guess, Zord setup. But, um, yeah, it actually did seem to boot pretty quick, uh, even though it was booting off a thumb drive. I, if you're wondering what thumb drive it is, it's just some random SanDisk one uh, I bought from Office Depot for, I think, uh, $20. It's a 64 gigabyte drive. The X200 does not have USB 3.0 ports. So, a 50 second boot is uh, quite reasonable, I think. Um, I guess the uh, second system, the X200S, actually started up a little bit slower. I, that makes sense though, the X200S has a uh, low voltage processor. So, uh, after it booted up, uh, I did end up messing up typing in the password a few times, but uh, it uh, got to log in, and after that I guess it was, I mean, it's a USB thumb drive Linux installation. Uh, I should probably set the swappiness to 90 so it doesn't uh, kill the thing, but anyways though, I guess that's my video, and uh, I will upload a video of the actual installation. It won't be from the uh, USB one, but it will be of me actually installing it onto the hard drive I made this video from. So, it should be, uh, I guess, interesting to watch. I don't know. It's, uh, I'm going to speed it up by like 10x because it took 30 minutes, but that's a lot quicker than actually going through the installer, especially since I only have to press uh, I think yes a couple times. Uh, hopefully in the future I'll work that out and I'll just be a one-line installer. But anyways though, uh, have a good one and sorry the ending got a little bit rambly there. But uh, peace.